on your first open of Blender, you're greeted with all this. I get that it's a daunting task to take on the challenge to learn Blender, but don't worry, here's all the basics you need to know in just 6 minutes. So what we have here is the 3D view, where most of the things are happening, the outliner, which is basically just a list of all the things in your scene, the properties panel, in the properties panel there's a lot of settings you can fiddle with, but in this video we won't be focusing on that too much. The timeline panel is also pretty irrelevant today, so let's get back to the view part. We have three objects here, a camera, a light, and a cube. But before we even get to them, you have to know how to move in the viewport. You can rotate your view by holding the middle mouse button and dragging your mouse. To move your view around, hold shift and drag with your middle mouse button. You can zoom in by scrolling, but for a more accurate zoom, you can hold CTRL and drag with your middle mouse button. To select objects, you can just click them. And to select multiple objects, you can click them while holding SHIFT. And now that we have selected all our objects, we can delete them. You can press DELETE or X on your keyboard. You'll be asked if you really want to delete them. In this tutorial, we will. To add a new object, you can go here and click ADD. You can also do this by pressing SHIFT A. So now you have a menu with a lot of items and submenus. Most of the time, all you need is the mesh submenu. Here you can add a plane, a cube, like we've already seen, a circle, a UV sphere, an icosphere, which as you can see, is a bit different from the UV sphere, a cylinder, a cone, and a torus. You can also add a grid, which is basically just a plane, and our beloved Suzanne. For this tutorial, we will add in a UV sphere. Let's get to the tools. On your left, you have a menu of tools. Our first tool is the selection tool. The default selection tool is the select box, basically selecting with a box. If you hold this button, you can change it to a SELECT CIRCLE or a SELECT LASSO. You can also cycle these by pressing W on your keyboard. We also have the MOVE tool. This is used to move the things in your scene. You can see the blue, red and green handles. You can use these to move your selection in a specific axis. Blue is the z-axis, green is the y-axis, red is the x-axis. The direction doesn't really matter if all you're doing is staying in Blender, but if you want to move your models into a game engine, for example, I suggest looking out for them. You also have these little squares. They basically mean moving around an axis. So green means moving around the y-axis, red means moving around the x-axis, and blue means moving around the z-axis. You can also grab in the middle and move your selection around however you like. You can cancel your transformation by right-clicking. All these actions you can also do by pressing G. You can move your object, and by pressing the letter of each axis, you can lock the movement into that axis. So if I press X on the keyboard, I lock the movement into the x-axis. If I press Y on the keyboard, I lock it to the y-axis. And if you guessed right, you can press Z for the Z-axis. Remember the little squares? You can also do that with G. So if you want to move your object around the Y-axis, you'll press Shift-Y. The same works for the X-axis and the Z-axis. Now let's look at rotation. You can find it under the Move tool. While you have the rotation tool active, you get these circles around your object. The white one rotates around your view. Red one around the X-axis, green around the Y-axis, and blue around the z-axis. You can also rotate your object by pressing R. You can lock your rotation around an axis the same way you do it when moving. So Z for the z-axis, X for the x-axis, and Y for the y-axis. Next, we'll go to the scale tool. With the white circle, you can scale your object uniformly, and the handles work like you'd expect. Blue for the z-axis, red for the x-axis, and Y for the y-axis. These planes also work the same way as the Move tool. 
the shortcut for scaling is S, as with the handles, locking into an axis also works the same way as the move tool and the rotate tool. The transform tool has move, rotate and scale all in one tool. I suggest using this tool to get used to all the tools. You might have noticed the grid. You can snap your transformations to the grid by holding control while doing it. So if I move my object and hold control, it will snap to the grid. Same goes for rotating, which will snap to a predefined degree. Same goes for scaling. So you might have noticed this little orange dot at the center of your object. That's your object origin. Think of it as the center of your object. All the transformations of your object happen around that spot. So if your origin was here and you wanted to rotate your object, it would rotate around that spot. And if you wanted to scale your object, it would scale around that same spot. If you want your origin to the center of your object, you can go here, open up the object menu, go to set origin and origin to geometry. When you've done all these transformations to your object, you can go to the properties panel and see what you've done. You can see your object's location, rotation and scale. You might have heard about edit mode. In Blender, there's two modes, object mode and edit mode. This video was entirely in object mode, but in edit mode, you can dive deeper into your model by editing vertices, edges and faces. But all that will be seen in my next video on edit mode. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel, comment on what you would like to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.